What's going on guys, coming to you today with an Armada fleet build. We're using Ryan Kingston's fleet builder and I'm going to try a different take on the Architans. So if you've seen some of my tournament reports or some of my bat reps, I like to run a lot of Architans in a conga line and I always go with the light cruisers for that because I'm focusing on the side arc and the only things I need for that is a cheap cost. So I go with the cheap one, the turbo laser upgrade slot uh, if I want to add something like enhanced armament or slave turrets or something like that and uh, and then just the side side arc really uh, sometimes people will try and come at me head on and the black die is nice in the front it happens once in a while but I usually use the side arc but instead I'm going to use the command cruiser this time and I decided because uh, I had played with a uh, command cruiser the other day and I really liked it to get the support team and so engine techs actually works out really good because normally this is a ship that's not very maneuverable and I had actually used engine techs along with Jergerod and made these guys incredibly maneuverable uh, so some of the stuff that I could do with them was really really nice and so I said you know what let's do a build kind of taking advantage of these guys and I don't necessarily have to fly them uh, in the same way I can really kind of take advantage of their maneuverability this way. Um, but how can I also maximize their attack? So uh, I am going to be running Vader as my commander and I'm going to give them enhanced armament. If we're going to take advantage of their maneuverability, then we can totally uh, make sure that we, uh, you know, try to get maximize the arcs. And, and this is a possible way that you can get. Uh, you know, double arc on these guys and take advantage of that. But uh, you, you know, you, you're always going to at least get uh, you know a side and maybe a front, or you, you know, it's possible you might be able to get a double side arc and pull off the Akbar slash. But the other thing I'm going to do with these guys is because I've got the maneuverability to line up my shots, uh, and I'm going to have Vader as my commander, so they're all going to have rerolls available. I'm going to add Intel Officer to to this, and I'm going to add two of them. So they're going to pack a punch. They're going to be like uh, you know, like a tag team. And they're going to be like uh, old uh, WWE, or actually WWF at the time, like Demolition, right? Axe and Smash. You could even add a third one if you wanted to go with Crush. That's going to be their names, Axe and Smash, right there. Yes. So let me zoom out a little bit. Now, I got, I got, I got the tag team right there. Uh, I don't want to put Vader on there because I'm going to put these guys up close and personal. I'm going to try and do a nice initiative bid. Um... And what we're going to do is we're going to do a... I talked about how, you know, victories were really nice with disposable capacitors. So we'll go with a standard, what's now a kind of a standard victory build, disposable capacitors and gunnery team. Um, I don't need uh, leading shots, although that would be great. I just don't need that right here. So instead, I will go with spinal armament. Um, I'm going to be running Vader here anyway, so we can totally, you know, totally take care of that. Um... And let's add, I want to add a raider also. Um, not a putting a whole lot on this raider, uh, but I will give him external racks. And I don't, again, I've got Vader, so I don't really need, oh, if I get up close in black range, I really don't need those evades. So I don't have to put, uh, you know, I don't I don't have to put stuff for rerolls on any of my ships because Vader takes care of all of that. The Architans don't really have the capability to get the rerolls built in. Uh, the raider can and the victory can, I can do leading shots here and I could do ordnance experts on the raider but I don't need to because I've got Vader so he's saving me some points there um, now I'm not going squadronless here I've got some points for squadrons although none of the like I could rank, I could have the victory be a carrier and this is where you know it goes up to preference uh, but I think I'm gonna go with some rogues because I, I'm of the mindset right now if I was going to go with, like, if I was going to try to fill out on squadrons and just go with TIE Fighters, well, it might be better for me to maybe use Sloan or something like that. So, well, how am I going to take best advantage of Vader by, by I think I'm going to go with Rogues. Now, there's two things. To, I first thought about re running two Decimators, and it puts me at 399, so that could fit. Uh, however, with a firepower heavy build... One of the things I like to be able to do is be first player. So I think if I drop the rogues and I swap them to fire sprays, now I've got a nine point initiative bid. Now that's definitely giving me some flexibility, uh, a, a ton of flexibility. So much flexibility that you could actually come in here and you could add Warlord if you wanted to. And now you're back to 399, although I don't really need Warlord with Vader as much, although it is nice. Um, uh, you could do, well, I don't need Corruptor. Um, but yeah, you, we, we could add different things here. We could add boarding parties to the Raider if we wanted to. 
Although our boarding troopers wouldn't be too shabby. Although I honestly, I don't. I'm kind of thinking in this build, boarding engineers might be better because of the fact that I've got in intel officers. Some people are like, well, you know what? I don't want to lose my brace, so I'll just let the damage through. You know, and, and, and against, especially against like a star destroyer. Uh, you might see a couple of instances of damage getting sent through. So I don't really see a whole lot of boarding engineers get used. I think they're going to work a little bit better on the rebel side of the house. But uh, but yeah, so I mean, you could go with that. But I think a 9-point initiative bid would be pretty good to get yourself first player here and uh, and give you some options. You've got four activations. You've got um, you know, a light squadron presence, but they're, but they're tough squadrons. they got six hull. They've got Bomber with two blue dice, so they're a serious threat to ships. And uh, and they've got Rogue, so you don't have to dedicate any ships to activating them. So, so they're not not terrible, uh, but you know you can change that. You can change things up a little bit. Uh, we could drop them out, and we could add a couple of Tie Fighters if we wanted to have more of a defensive screen. I could go four, five Tie Fighters even, and a 395 is a respectable bid. We could potentially, you know, we could work with that. Um, but I'm going to stick with the fire sprays because I haven't flown fire sprays in a while, uh, and that gives me a comfortable bit. But that's that's where you have some some wiggle room. And of course, you know, you could you could change around this build a little bit. You don't have to have the engine techs in there because you don't have anything that's giving them navs. So the difficulty in a build like this being uh, being really really good is knowing how to set the commands here for the architects. So the idea that I would go with in this case is to do a navigation command first turn. Uh, depending on where your opponent sets up in the speed, possibly a navigation command second turn. And then you start with putting in concentrate fire commands. You're going to want concentrate fire. You're going to want to get five red dice out the side with Vader. You're definitely going to want that. Uh, so that's as when you have Intel officer, uh, and you're going to want that for both of these guys. So you go up against, oh, okay, Imperial Star Destroyer. Oh, I see you have ECM. No problem. Intel officer, your brace. Do you want to use it now? Because you know you have got another Architons coming right away, you know, and, and then, you know, force them to make the tough decisions, get some damage through, and, uh, you know, uh, get those shields down, then fly the Raider in last put him right in close range then activate first first player next turn activate the raider first pop the external racks fly him away all the while kind of keeping the victory in the rear if they want to come towards him they're going to have to face disposable capacitors and gunnery team uh so you know that's that's nice and, and depending on their squadron presence if if the fire sprays need to just tie up enemy squadrons they can do that or if there's not that nasty of a squadron presence just fly them outside maybe lead some people somebody on a uh, kind of a goose chase and um or you know use them to kind of hunt down a fleeing flotilla or somebody who's got relay you know you can try to do something like that as well there's definitely a lot of options of things that you could do this would be a, a fun build I, f I find architects with engine techs are, are pretty pretty good you don't necessarily have to run them that fast here but like if you had Jergerod for example you could do um, two at speed one uh, with a nav token one at speed two two at speed three and then do another two after that so that's incredibly that's that's just incredibly uh, incredibly mobile you go from a ship that's not very mobile to a to potentially one of the most mobile ships in the game so um, you know very maneuverable if you if you play it right uh, but but you would probably have to in this case you may want to consider staggering um, nav and concentrate fire depending on kind of how your opponent is and that's and that's gonna be the trick to this build so this isn't I wouldn't call this a beginner's build uh, this would be more of an advanced build if you're very good with making sure you don't get your command dials wrong and if that's one of your strengths then this might be the build for you um, but uh, I think it would be a fun build regardless I always like Intel officer and uh, and you know you do have a lot of long-range firepower and now your ships are weaker here except for the victory now one of the things we could do uh, that we're lacking here is where we don't we're, you know we could administer Tua also here and uh, put ECM on now that puts us right at 400 uh, but uh, I, you know I'm not I'm not really this isn't a, exactly a, a second place uh, or sorry a second player uh, type of type of build now let's do objectives just in case we don't end up being first player um, advanced gunnery is not going to be the best thing for this I mean granted 
the Architons could potentially be great, but this is something... The advanced Gunnery is something that tends to benefit your opponent a little bit more, uh, and so it's a really a tough one to 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 do unless you've got a, a shore fire, you know, I absolutely need this. Like, if you're running Avenger with boarding uh, boarding troopers, you know, then... Well, you know, you don't. You definitely don't have gunnery team there, so that's like maybe a good time to do something like that. Or if you've got a Mon Karen or something like that that doesn't, you know, any really good single arc ship that doesn't have it. Or if you're running a home one with Agbar, uh, then maybe advanced gunnery is a good option for that as well. Um, opening salvo is one of my other go-to's, but that's not really that great here because we don't have enough ships shooting, especially at long range. Um, at long range, when we first started shooting, I'll only have three ships, so you know, if I end up going up against a, a five or six ship list, this will this will tear me apart. So definitely don't want that. Um, I kind of kind of like station assault because I, I like it better if I've got an interdictor in there. Um, if I if I wanted to run most wanted really bad, I would probably swap the raider out for a Gazanti and maybe add more squadrons as a result. So that's a, an, an option, but uh, I'm not going to go with that one either. Um, I'm thinking I'm thinking station assault here. Uh, it kind of gives me some control of where my po uh, my opponent is going to go, and. Uh, and uh, considering the victories, one of his strengths it can be in just sitting there and waiting for you to come to him, uh, I think Station Assault will be good. And then the Architons can kind of fly around and kind of create a kill, help create a somewhat of a kill zone near the stations. Um, now here, we could do, it's possible to do capture the VIP here, because the Raider can potentially fly away enough that the Raider could just say, okay, I'm, in this case I'm going to capture the VIP, and then I'll fly away, and then you'll have to try and catch me if you want. Um, so that's an option, but uh, let's see what else we've got. Fire lanes would actually be really good here. Um, I, I've been using fire lanes lately. It would be very strong, especially with a victory, where I can put that token in right in front of me. Um, the only weakness here is if somebody's got a real heavy squadron presence and they get strategic ships all the way down and start moving the tokens back. Uh, but, but the thing is, you can kind of put them, uh, you can stack them all on top of each other, and it's another, it's very similar to Station Assault where you're just like, you know, come at me. Um, and so I kind of like Fire Lanes. You can get a lot of tokens, you can get a lot of victory points out of this and force them, force the battle where you want it to take place. So I think that's going to be good for this he for a heavy loaded victory. Um, and then for our blue ones... Alright, let's see, for blue... Um, I'm always a fan of Solar Corona and Superior Positions. I think Superior Positions could be uh, better here because of the extra mobility in the Architons. They'll have an easier time kind of swinging around and getting rear shots on... Uh, on somebody, so you can gain some victory tokens that way. Um, that's definitely an option. Uh, let's see. Some of the other ones I kind of like if I've got either strategic or or, or, or an interdictor, and it gets it gets so much so much better there. Um, Intel sweep. Have I done Intel sweep before? I don't even know if I've ever done Intel sweep. Uh, the real command dial. If they may choose one objective token at distance one of the ship and remove it from play and gain a victory point. Oh, it's whoever has more and gets 75. So that's one of those ones that could actually backfire and hurt you. So that's why I usually don't in get Intel sweep. That's uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think I'm going to go with superior positions here. This really doesn't um, doesn't really hurt me that bad. I mean, or I actually, Solar Corona might not be that bad, bad either, considering that I don't have ECM on my victory. Um, Solar Corona could be good, but uh, we'll go with superior positions. We'll try that one. Um, yeah, and that's another way of trying to say, you know what, come after and try and get in the rear arc of my victory if you can. You know, try to do that, and, uh, you know, you'll have a hard time because I've got a lot of dice I can bring to bear on you, even from long range. And if you do manage to get in the rear arc, well, I've got spinal armament, so I'm still rolling three dice at you out of my rear. So actually, the rear arc at long range is stronger than the side arc on the victory. So that's kind of that's kind of cool. I can I could fart all over you. All right. Well, <laughs> that's about all we've got uh, for this build. Let me pull it up, and uh, there it is. So uh, let me know what you think of the ultra potent command Architons command cruisers. Um, would you run it differently? 
could would you see maybe running a third Architons Command Cruiser? I, I, I tried putting that list together. The problem is then you end up having to put your, your, your commander on one of them or or you know, putting them on a raider and you know, out of the out of the choices available, it's it, it became very good and I just didn't I didn't feel good about it. I wanted my commander on a on a tougher ship. And I thought the victory was the way to go there. So uh, let me know in the comments what you would do differently. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you are entered to win. I am going to be announcing the giveaway, the first of two giveaway winners very, very shortly. So make sure you're entered to win that. And uh, all you th anything you have to do to enter to win is be a subscriber and leave a comment. Uh, so thank you guys so much for, for watching. And as always, have a great day.